Good morning. Good morning. Happy 4th of July. Especially you guys. Yay. Okay. Let's get this going. I would like to all to rise and welcome our judge. Prepare to post the colors. Post the colors. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color guard, return the ranks. Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem. You guys may be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce Chief Judge Armijo. Thank you. We don't have a microphone, so I will do my very best to speak up here. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Good morning. What a more fitting day can you think of, I can't, to spend the 4th of July, the celebration of our nation's independence, and I have to tell you, my favorite holiday of all. I grew up in uh, uh, northeastern New Mexico, across the mountains here, and grew up with, uh, as I say, parades and rodeos on the 4th of July as a kid. Uh, so they're tremendously good memories that I have, and uh, uh, I'm very honored to be here. I was here last year, uh, and I very uh, much welcomed uh, having been invited back uh, to preside um, on this 4th of July. The singing of our national anthem reminded me, uh, for some just bit of a moment here, uh, as, I, as I sang and I listened uh, uh, to it, to, uh, of my visit uh, two years ago to Fort McHenry in Baltimore. Um, it was in 2012. Uh, it was about the time to celebrate the War of 1812, and it was from a boat off in the harbor that Francis Scott Key penned the words to uh, our national anthem. And it was just a tremendous uh, uh, experience for me to be there, and I would encourage that if uh, any of you have never visited uh, the fort. It is a national park, very, very historic, and very meaningful. There's so many people that I want to thank, uh, but let me thank first and foremost uh, the family members and the friends that are here to honor 
each of the new citizens today. I celebrate you as much as I celebrate today our new citizens. I also want to thank uh, so many people here that uh, have made uh, this experience a meaningful one today, that were so much a part of it a year ago. Uh, Eagle Scout Troop 129 and 17, uh, Color Guard Master Jim Cobble, the Color Guard Stephen Ramos, uh, Civil Engineering at uh, Los Alamos National Labs, an intern. Sam Grothus, uh, UNM College of Education, part of the Color Guard. John Allison, uh, University of New Mexico, Los Alamos in Mechanical Engineering. Jonah Katz uh, from New Mexico Tech. Petroleum Engineering, his specialty. Ben Nelson, uh, Mechanical Engineering, New Mexico State University. Enrique Nejeda, Troop 17 from the VSU uh, Cleveland uh, High, a senior. Linda Hull, president of the Los Alamos uh, Rotary Club, and we thank them for providing the refreshments this morning. Uh, the Serpent Trail Dancers, uh, who will perform after the uh, ceremony, uh, they will perform the Tewa Pueblo dances. Uh, flowers by Gillian for providing flowers uh, to each of the uh, participants here today. The Western National Parks Associations for providing each new citizen today with the bandolier movie entitled Sky Island, uh, narrated by uh, Meryl Streep. If you haven't seen that, I've seen it so many times when it's run on television, it's beautiful. Dan and Tom Betts uh, for singing the national anthem here today. There's so many people, and especially the Bandelier National Monument, uh, the superintendent, the administration of this beautiful venue for providing uh, Again, each of you, uh, new citizens, uh, an annual park pass to Bandelier National Monument. And for also hosting this uh, today. Thank you so much. You know, uh, courts come with a, a great amount of formality, especially in the federal system. Uh, and one thing I think that we as judges uh, do not do enough of is do outreach into our communities. And that is the reason that I think it's so important for judges, as we can, uh, participate in ceremonies like this, away from the courthouse, away from the formal structure of a court setting, but no less important to the work that we all do as judges and the work that we, we do to serve our communities. I think outreach is important, and I fully support this opportunity. Uh, and I, again, thank, thank you for the invitation here today. You know, as I mentioned, uh, the 4th of July is a very special time, and one of the things that uh, I wanted to share with you is a story in my family about how my family recalled uh, celebrating becoming full-fledged citizens of the United States. Uh, my uh, grandmother was born <clears throat> in New Mexico. We go back many, many generations, but they were, of course, uh, uh, residents of the territory of New Mexico. My grandmother was uh, approximately 15 years old when New Mexico became a state in 1912, just uh, 102 years ago. And she recorded what she remembered about how the community of Las Vegas, New Mexico, celebrated the news of knowing that New Mexico had been uh, uh, included uh, into the Union. <coughs> And it's important to share that, but I also want to say that what is perhaps even more important is recognizing the significance of this facility, this venue, this park, this monument, uh, and being able to be here and in many ways, as I say, walk in the steps of our first Americans. That is extremely important, and I do recognize that. I think that's what makes this venue especially uh, significant. I think that, as we all know and we, we hear so much, but often we need to be reminded uh, that with the privileges of citizenship that bind us today, so too come the responsibilities that each of us must acknowledge and uh, must undertake. The responsibilities handed to each of the new citizens today require that each of you meet 
uh, each of, le of life's challenges by recognizing that we are all part of the solution to the challenges that face us and will face us along life's journey. Today, I wish to challenge each of you to let your commitment to your community begin the fulfillment of your responsibilities as citizens. Exercise your right to vote. Let your voice be heard. Let it be counted. Extend the hand of friendship to those fellow citizens who are elderly, who are alone. Lend a hand, always, to those less fortunate. To those of you who are mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts, sisters and brothers, I encourage you to take the time and make the time to reach out to your members, your younger members, and mentor them. Bring them along with you on your life's journey. And to those of you who have the good fortune of having a mother, a father, an elder, a wise person in your lives, embrace their efforts as they seek to mentor you. And today, uh, for so many, so many years, I think that we fail to recognize our youth and our society, our children. So with special emphasis, I ask that you reach out to the children and youth in our society and let them know that you can make a positive difference in their lives. Teach them, but also learn from them. Become involved in their lives. Make the time to volunteer at their schools if you can. Share with them the wisdom and the traditions of your unique family histories. For I think we all know that our children and our youth make up a very small percentage of our population. We should never forget that they are 100% of our future. And I say do these things again and again and again by incorporating uh, these seemingly simple gestures into your life's journey you not only honor the privilege of citizenship, but you begin to fulfill the responsibility of citizenship. As I noted, my family's journey began many generations ago in the wonderful territory and now the state that we know is New Mexico. My grandmother recorded these uh, words uh, after reflecting on how she recalled her family celebrating the news that New Mexico became a state. She was born in Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, of course, we know that's the first Las Vegas of uh, 1837. She was a young girl of about 15 years old uh, when statehood arrived in, two, in 1912. And she wrote that after the Enabling Act providing for the admission of New Mexico as a state was passed in the summer of 1910, she said the only conversation that could be heard everywhere in Las Vegas was with reference to statehood about the advantages that a change from the territorial form of government to statehood would bring about. The citizens would now have an opportunity to select their state officials. They would have the benefit of two United States senators. They would have so many other uh, rights and privileges that they didn't have as citizens of the territory. She said that after the Constitutional Convention was held in Santa Fe, uh, a proposed constitution was approved in the general election of January in 1912, and there was much rejoicing. And the only thing that remained was for the United States Congress to approve the constitution of the new state of New Mexico. And that happened in August of 1911. The young girl went on to say that she recalled the celebration on that special day. She said the way that she remembered the community celebrating was to have all the churches in the town of Las Vegas ring their bells throughout the day. She said the bells at the fire departments, and there were two, rang their bells all the day. She said the whistles from the uh, train engines at the railroad station blew their whistles most of the day. And the train engines, when they would come in, pass through Las Vegas, tooted their engines. This was how the community then celebrated knowing that all of its citizens now we're citizens of the United States, fully fledged, as you will be here in just a few moments. She remembered the speech making on the Old Town Plaza 
and how there was a silent uh, light torch parade from the plaza to the railroad station. Wonderful words describing how one community celebrated uh, really its independence and recognizing that it now uh, was a state within our union. To those of you that have friends and family who are here with you, uh, to the new citizens, I'm going to relax the rules. This is the 4th of July. If your friends and family have cameras, uh, they want to come take pictures, I'm going to allow them to come about. And as we administer the oath, uh, please feel free to do that. And do that uh, uh, without any uh, limitation or restriction. I think this is an important day. It's an important day uh, for all of the new citizens. I would like now to ask uh, that uh, Officer Burke introduce the applicants uh, for citizenship uh, by country. Your Honor, may it please the court. You may proceed. My name is James Burke. I am an Immigration Services Officer with U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. I will be calling the country of origin from our candidates today. When you all hear your country of origin, please rise and then you may have a seat. Argentina. Belarus. Brazil. France. India. Mexico. Poland. Russia. Rwanda. South Africa. United Kingdom. And Ukraine. Did I miss anybody? Any countries? All right. Your Honor, I ask that you please uh, sign this order of citizenship and concurrently grant any name changes. I will gladly do so. I said I'm a lefty. I have to turn the pages almost upside down here. <laughs> we live in a right-handed world. We do. <laughs> We'd make good table mates. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. All right, let me invite any uh, photographers to come forward and position themselves if they wish at this time. Quite a few. I'm going to ask that the uh, new citizens please stand. And please raise your right hands, if you will, and repeat after me. I hereby declare uh, on, on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend 
The Constitution and Laws of the United States of America. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States. When required by the law. That I will perform non combatant service. In the armed forces of the United States. When required by the law. That I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law. And that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. Be seated. <laughs> At this time, I wish to introduce our special speaker here this morning, uh, Dino Scambionte, the Chief of Police of Los Alamos. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to echo the judge's comments uh, in, in thanking Bandelier National Monument for hosting this event and for Tom Betts for uh, asking me to be your uh, a speaker today and for all the people that uh, are involved in putting together uh, this ceremony today. It is an honor to be among the first to greet each of our new citizens of the United States of America. Watching each of you raise your right hand and, and swear that sacred oath uh, takes me back to what it must have been like when my own grandfather uh, came to this country from Italy in 1909. Uh, and the fact that I am able to be here and celebrate this moment with each of you is a testament to this country's dedication, not only to those here today, but to those who came before you. You have come with a promise of opportunity and a vision of hope. Today we are able to welcome 15 new citizens from 12 different countries who from this day forward have earned the right to call this country home. And while here and across the United States we see many diverse backgrounds, we are bonded together by our love for this country and by our commitment to this country's founding principles. Our strength lies in our diversity. Our history abounds with stories of those who have capitalized on the opportunities this country provides. And yet, we recognize that as individuals, we do not have to be famous, wealthy, or especially gifted. Through our commitment, we are able to do our part in sustaining those ideals that make us strong and united. It is the teacher who takes a little extra time with the student that's struggling. It's the nurse who volunteers her time to help those in need. It is the citizen that chooses to help those less fortunate. We are the most giving country in the world, and each of us in our own way can affect our communities and this country in a positive way. That individuals such as each of you would be willing to make enormous sacrifices, not only for yourselves, but for your families, serves as a reminder of the determination it took for you to reach this moment and offers a glimpse of hope for what you will accomplish as citizens of the United States. 
It is your new hopes, your new optimism, your commitment that ensures a brighter future for us all. I want to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to share this incredible moment. And now, uh, although we've already done the Pledge of Allegiance once, it is customary for the ceremony to uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance after our new citizens, citizens have taken their oath. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Chief. Let me at this time introduce uh, our keynote speaker here this morning, Jason Lott, who is the superintendent of the Bandelier National Monument. Superintendent. My fellow Americans, I hope you like the sound of that. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Bandelier National Monument, your backyard and your now favorite national park. <laughs> On behalf of National Park Service Director John Jarvis and Intermountain Regional Director Sue Massica, it is my honor and privilege to be in front of you today, a day that this nation welcomes 15 new citizens onto its rolls. Please know that a part of this ceremony is a, excuse me, please know that being a part of this ceremony is a privilege that I do not take lightly. The opportunity to associate and to support a group of people making such a commitment is a great honor. Each of you has made a conscious decision to become an American citizen, which is a, which is a significant milestone in your life and marks the beginning of a new chapter. And what better place for a new start than in a national park, land that now belongs to you? I realize that each of you had to work hard to, to achieve your U.S. citizenship many having to learn a new language, as well as adjusting to a new way of life. I suspect that many of us who are born in this country may never realize the risk that you took to be here today. Abandoning one life with its challenges, but fully understanding its culture and ways, more than likely leaving behind friends and family, and moving your allegiance from one country to another, and starting anew was surely no small endeavor. Whereas I, as well as many others, was born into U.S. citizenship with its many benefits, you made sacrifices and took risk. Through motivation, determination, and tenacity, you are here today. You have chosen to invest in the United States, and today we choose to invest in you. From now on, we'll refer to this as our country, yours and mine. In addition to formalizing your naturalization and citizenship, we're here to celebrate the American dream. Being a part of a nation in which all people are created equal and all are endowed by their creator with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These basic principles are outlined in our Declaration of Independence, signed just 238 years ago on this date, establishing our nation that is both yours and mine as a country that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. The signing of this document was the first time that a government was formally created to specifically serve its citizens, in which it now serves you. Going forward from today, I encourage you to fully embrace these principles and be proud of your new role as citizens of the United States. Please know that the happiness will not just be handed to you but it is instead a state of being that you must strive to achieve. America is a land of opportunity where citizens have the freedom to pursue their dreams, a place in which everyone has a choice to make a difference in their community, and ultimately to improve the quality of life for themselves, their families, and other citizens of this great nation. There are no limitations because of your cultural background, your beliefs, your religion, or even your politics. 
Keep in mind that achieving your dream takes work, and it's mostly hard work. Today, you have overcome a sizable hurdle. Seize this opportunity that you've been given and know that America needs you. It requires your active participation, your fresh perspectives, your sweat, your skills, your stories, and your faithfulness. One of the greatest ways you can honor this commitment as a citizen is to be involved. Voting, of course, is an incredible right and privilege, but I also encourage you to engage in other ways. Understand the issues and speak out and challenge your elected officials, those that you have empowered to represent you. Volunteer your time and talent to help those less fortunate or to better your community. Support our troops, our public servants, and those that are actively working to, pr to protect and improve our way of life. Be a good neighbor. Understand and support the privileges of others to have their opinions and beliefs. If needed, be prepared to defend these others, our country, and these values. I am your superintendent for your national park, Bandelier National Monument. I work for you. The Bandelier, the Bandelier staff work for you. It is our job to protect these resources and to provide for your enjoyment of them. As a citizen of the United States, these federal parks are yours. And I challenge each of you to hold myself, the National Park Service, and the federal government accountable on how we manage your lands and your resources. Take pride in your ownership of these places and speak out if you do not approve. I promise you, we will listen. These are your national parks. Take ownership. But do not stop there. Learn and understand all aspects, of our all aspects of our nation, both at the local level and the national level. Have informed opinions, engage others, and have a voice. Attend public meetings, write letters, engage your representatives. If so inclined, run for office. And most importantly, vote. These are your rights, do not waste them. This is your land and your nation, make it work for you. Ours is a government tasked with serving its citizens. Give more than you take and expect the best. With this ceremony today, we all reaffirm our commitment as citizens, as well as another truth, that our nation's success would simply not be possible without the generations of immigrants who have come to our shores from every country in the world. Unless you are Native American, we all trace our ancestry to those that took great risk or overcame monumental challenges to arrive here from someplace else. Whether they arrived as colonists to the original colonies, or set foot on Ellis Island, or crossed the Rio Grande, all came to America with hopes of a better life. And you had this right as well. Make the best of it. In parting, I hope that you do not feel that you need to leave behind your native culture and language as you start new lives as American citizens. Since its beginning, this country has been enriched by its immigrants. And you are now a part of what makes this country great. The qualities of your background define who you are. And this collective of our diversity as citizens enriches who we are as a nation. It is my hope that in the years to come, as you take part in future July 4th festivities, you'll look back finally on today as a special day, a day in which you took your final step for citizenship, and also a day that became a part of something great, something larger. I hope that you remember the challenges that were set forth to you today, specifically the challenge to vote, to work hard, to positively contribute to society, and to achieve happiness. I hope that you look back with pride that you met and surpassed each of these challenges and that your contributions were not only for yourself and your family, but also for the greater good of this country. The United States of America is a place to succeed, to prosper, and to live a good life. On behalf of the staff of Nash Bandelier National Monument, I congratulate you on becoming citizens of this great nation, and I am looking forward to your successes as our country's newest citizens. Good luck, and thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Lott. All right, let me uh, call your attention here to the screen uh, and uh, hear a special message from President Obama. 
It's an honor and a privilege to call you a fellow citizen of the United States of America. This is now officially your country, your home to protect, to defend, and to serve through active and engaged citizenship. Together, we are a nation united not by any one culture or ethnicity or ideology, but by the principles of opportunity, equality, and liberty that are enshrined in our founding documents. Today marks a very special day in your life. You've traveled a long path to get here. You've sworn a solemn oath to this country and now have all the rights of citizenship. With the privilege of citizenship, though, come great responsibilities. And so I ask that you use your freedoms and your talents to contribute to the good of our nation and the world. Always remember that in America, no dream is impossible. Like the millions of immigrants who have come before you, you have the opportunity to enrich this country through your contributions to civic society, business, culture, and your community. You can help write the next great chapter in our American story. And together, we can keep the beacon that is America burning bright for all the world to see. I am proud to welcome you as a new citizen of this country. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Great, you may be seated. All right, 
Let me at this time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, introduce uh, Ms. Patricia Dominguez, uh, who is uh, from uh, United States Senator Heinrich's office, and she will be uh, delivering some congratulatory remarks. I have a, a brief message here uh, of welcome and congratulations from um, United States Senator Martin Heinrich. Good morning and happy Independence Day. We are here today to celebrate our nation's independence as well as the hopes and dreams of these remarkable individuals as they become United States citizens. July 4th is the day that marks not only our nation's fight for freedom against tyranny and oppression, but also celebrates the freedom of each individual. It is a day to reflect on the fact that we live in a land of opportunity where we can work to make our dreams come true and where each of us is guaranteed the inalienable, inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As the son of an immigrant, I am familiar with the unique promise America represents for individuals and families. I know how hard immigrants work, how much they believe in this country, and how much they're willing to give back. Indeed, the diverse people of this country are its greatest strength and a key to our success. As you become a U.S. citizen today, I urge you to continue to discover the history and culture of our state and our country, and to teach your children to honor and appreciate the rich diversity that makes this nation so great. I also ask you to recognize that with great freedom comes great responsibility. As citizens, we share a responsibility to work together within our democratic system of government to strengthen it and to ensure that the promise of America endures for generations to come. As United States citizens, each of you is now bestowed with the responsibility of lending your voice to our decision-making process by exercising your right to vote and choosing <clears throat> as well as becoming the leaders of our 21st century. New Mexico's remarkable spirit is rooted in our diversity, our history, and our culture, which has always been enriched by immigrant communities and family members. Let me again congratulate you and offer my best wishes for success and happiness. Sincerely, Martin Heinrich, United States Senator. Thank you. Thank you. And here to uh, convey congratulatory remarks on behalf of United States Senator Tom Udall, uh, Ms. Michelle Hawkins Ortiz. Thank you. Good morning. It's a good afternoon yet. The last speaker, and I'm sure you all are eager to be on your way. This has been a, an incredible day, and I've been moved to tears on a couple of uh, uh, a couple of points during the ceremony, watching you wave your flag. Um, Senator Udall would have loved to have been here, but asked me to convey this message in his own words. <clears throat> Dear friends, it is an honor to share a few words with you on this beautiful occasion to welcome our nation's newest citizens. We gather today on the 4th of July to honor and recognize how hard you've worked to get here and to witness this great step forward in your lives. Each one of you is part of the heritage and promise of America. And we are Americans, not just because of an oath or a piece of paper. We are Americans because we share common values and enduring ideals, which include freedom and equal opportunity. We are truly a nation of immigrants, from the Revolutionary War to the Cold War, from Valley Forge to Iwo Jima, immigrants have helped to defend our freedoms, even when they did not always enjoy those freedoms themselves. From our railroads and cities to the internet highway, immigrants have helped build America. Each of you also has your own unique story of striving for a better life for yourself and for your loved ones. Many of you overcame great challenges to be here today. The important thing is you kept going. You got up each morning, went to work, cared for your family, and kept your hope alive. That is the character that makes America strong and helped us create a culture and an economy that is the envy of the world. In New Mexico, we celebrate and treasure our diversity. It is part of who we are. We are called the land of enchantment, not because of our beautiful landscapes, but because of our people. On this special day, let us also remember and honor the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to keep America free. 
We are all citizens because of them. St. Augustine believed that there is no republic where there is no justice. That is our challenge today, working for justice and opportunity for all Americans. In doing so, we honor those who came before us and paved the way so that each of us has a chance to achieve the American dream. In taking this giant step closer to your American dream, don't forget to let your voice be heard along the way. As your United States Senator, I look forward to working with you in promoting the issues that are important to you, your family, and your community. And I welcome your input on how we can together protect the fundamental values that we all hold dear. Thank you again, and congratulations. Each of you, new citizens, <coughs> our fellow Americans, honors us by your presence here today. In a few moments, uh, it'll be my privilege to uh, present you with your certificates. Uh, at this time, I, I think we need to ask everybody to stand. Please stand for the retrieval of colors. Everybody is up. Scout Troop, would you please retrieve the colors? Color Guard, forward, march. Color Guard, halt. Prepare to retrieve the colors. Retrieve the colors. Color Guard, return the post. Thank you, sir. <laughs> First official duty. Bravo. Job well done. <laughs> the court now stands in recess. We will be giving out the certificates to our new citizens. If you wish to position yourself to get a picture as her Honor gives them the certificates. Please feel free. Just don't block anyone else. All right? Your Honor, have you met Jesse Mendes? This is our new field office here. We're facing Oh, okay. What Yes, Arlington, Texas. Okay, so if Your Honor would like to stand here. Oh, absolutely. Just snuck it in here. How do you want us to position here? here? I think I'll put you here and then everyone will be okay. uh, They'll come through. Tom will just kind of help us. Um, I'll take one of these and you can present the flag. Well, Tom will feed them to you. I make it. Um, you know what? It works so well. <laughs> a couple of more announcements after the applicants there are new citizens get their certificates there are refreshments in the back we will be clearing out the chairs please stay for the young Tiwa people dancers okay thank you I will be calling each citizen by name uh, please collect your certificate and then you may shake hands with our dignitaries Please excuse my pronunciations. I'll do the best that I can. Kremilch Bertelli. <laughs> Marcin Wilhelm Zern Zerniakow.
Do you want to mention the flags or not? Where they came from? Oh, yeah, that was in. Were they? Yeah. I'm not familiar with the flags. Okay. Superintendent? S Superintendent? Jason. Jason? Sorry? Do you want to announce the origin of the flags? Do the flags fly over the Capitol? Yes, oh, um, Tom, would you like to do that? Sure. Yeah, just make a mention of that. I just wanted you guys to know that are receiving these flags today. These flags are fairly special because they have flown over your nation's capital. And uh, we get them in for this ceremony. I do have the boxes that they come in with the certificate to show that it has flown over your capital. So they're very special for you guys. Jer Jero Jerome Olivier Delegal. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, congratulations. Peace is a borrow. Francisco Javier Cordell Sanchez. Uma Krishnaswamy. Yulia Anatolia Levna Kunde. <laughs> Edgar Uriel Marquez Cast Cast Castillo. Gavin Lawrence Pultney. Congratulations. Welcome. Huh? Yeah, for sure. Jose Andres Ramirez Rodriguez. Congratulations. Priscilla Alice Rokemore. <laughs> Igor Mikhailovich Savukov. Oksana Vasilevna Sabukova. Congratulations. Welcome. I think I got it. Edith Sylvia Stringer. Congratulations, everyone. 
please have some refreshments and please remain for the dances. The children are ages 6 to 19.
perform this dance is because we want to send our prayers to the Creator and let Him know that we have um, problems here of our own that you know we need help with or we need guidance. So the best way to send those prayers, not only through the smoking tobacco that we have in our traditional ways, but is also to pray to the eagle and to ask for its guidance because it's the bird that can fly the highest and closest to the sun. So with that, um, each prayer that we send out, it goes straight up to the um, our great creator, the sun, the, the one who um, gives us light, warmth, and health every day. Because um, if we didn't have the, the sun, it'd be a very cold place and it wouldn't be a very colorful place. So with that said, we'd like to get started. Thank you. And again, you guys can take pictures. Thank you.
up, I'd like to introduce uh, my dance group. And I'm just waiting on those other two dancers. 